Well, good morning, church family, both uh, at home and here. It's great to see your faces and to be together in worship. I'm not going to tell you how many takes it took to get that candle to light. <laughs> it's windy outside these days. Why don't we stand together today as we draw into the presence of God and let's continue in this series, The Paradox of Peace, asking the Lord to just help to us to experience his presence, his healing peace this morning. This week, this even today, has been marked with a confusion and chaos and technical difficulties, and we just really want to be fully present and to just invite the Lord to do his work in our hearts and in our church. And so, uh, church, let's call out to the Lord together in song, uh, and let's worship him in spirit and truth, uh, for he is the giver of our peace this morning. Let's worship.
Lord, give us peace today. Lord, be our peace today. God, be our peace, we pray. to the throne of grace. Father, we pray that you would pour your grace upon this offering of our worship this morning. Father, we come to you with troubled hearts. We come to you weary from the chaos that we experience in this world. God, even our best days nowadays, Father, are so far from perfect. They're so far from right. They're so far from what they're meant to be. Father, we need the peace that only comes from heaven. We need the peace that only comes from knowing you, Lord. So, Father, we come to your presence on begging to believe, Lord, that your invitation, that your offer is true. Father, help us to believe that we truly can lay our cares at your feet and find rest for our weary souls. Lord, how we want to believe, Father, that the peace that passes all understanding can be ours today. And so, Father, would you lift our hearts? Would you lift our eyes? And church, I'm just going to invite you to lift your hands just as a sign of receiving. Lord, just like fresh rain falling on the ground, Lord, would you pour out your peace upon your people? Would you pour out healing and grace upon your people? Father, would you fill our hearts again with hope? Not just the hope of Christmas, God, but the hope of life everlasting. The peace that only Christ can give. Oh God, how we need you. So Father, comfort your people today. Strengthen and comfort our hearts today, we pray. Oh, how we love you, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this church, for this people where we belong, where we know, God, that we are loved and cared for and welcome. So heal our hearts today, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Woo. Wow, that was unplanned. It's just getting all the feels. Thank you, Lord. Well, church, take a moment. If you are uh, at home, uh, take a moment to drop a little hello in the comments or in the chat. And if you are here, why don't you turn and just wave to somebody from six feet or more and just uh, give a wink and a smile. And uh, let's just take a moment to prepare our hearts to hear from God's word. Good morning. Great to see y'all. Good to see you. <laughs> this is session two. Heard the bells. Take four, audio only. Mark? Well, good morning, Journey family. My name is John. I get to be one of the pastors here of this church, and I also have the privilege of reading God's word to you. 
Uh, what you just saw, I'll talk more about here in just a little bit, but it's a, uh, not only a passion project for members of our church, but it is a privilege to put out music that sings the glories of our Christ in his incarnation and coming to us for this Advent season. But I'll talk about that here at the end of the service. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And in our Paradox of Peace series, we are actually looking at the whole chapter of Luke chapter 2. But today we're going to focus in on verses 8 to 20. So Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. This is God's word for us. So please give it your careful attention. And in the same region... There were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel of the Lord went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor John. Well, good morning to everybody. Yes, good morning. In spite of our Technical difficulties, delays, and all of that is just par for the course. There's no room at the end, and there is no uh, perfect day seemingly anymore. Things are interrupted, disrupted, and all of that. And so, why shouldn't we preach on peace this morning? I'm Elder William Davey, also shepherding pastor here at Tower Grove, and I want to simply say uh, welcome to you, you that are here and you that are joining us uh, by live stream. We are so glad that you're here with us this day, a day to rejoice, a day to proclaim, a day to receive the very peace of God. And I simply want to say to everyone, uh, a big chug to you all. That's a virtual hug. And especially to my wife of 38 years for supporting me uh, throughout these years of ministry. Now, let me go on. We have been speaking about the Advent series, which is the paradox of peace. And this week is our second week. And so we will be talking about the peace that dispels. Now, this paradox of peace is just what you and I are experiencing and going through right now. Pastor, you're talking about peace, but I don't know if I'm really feeling it. Well, let me go straight to the master, okay, and quote what Jesus said. John 14 and 21, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 16, 33, Jesus also said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. And then he said, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And isn't that the, like the paradox that we are experiencing right now? Like, 
Lord, you saying, have peace and let not your heart be troubled, but you're the one who promised and prophesied and said, in this life, I will have trial and tribulation. Now, something just doesn't seem to make sense. I don't, how do I make peace out of these two things that I'm told to have peace, but I'm also told, but don't worry, your peace will be upset, unsettled, discombobulated, and all of that. How? How can this be? So this is the paradox of peace that we're talking about. And my job today is to preach on what we call the dispelling peace. You may say, okay. And then you may say, well, you may ask the question that I asked myself. How can I preach on peace when peace is so difficult to see? I mean, I'm looking around this world and I'm looking at the earth and I'm looking at the country and I'm looking at nations and I'm looking at states and I'm looking at cities and I'm looking at neighborhoods. I'm looking into homes. I'm looking at schools. I'm looking at churches and, and what do I see? I see wars and I see rumors of wars and they're, they're everywhere. And then I, I, I see anxiety, fears, phobias, depression. Suicides are at an all-time high. Crime is outrageous. People are not safe anywhere. And who can we trust in? The president? Which one? The government? Conservatives or liberal? The Constitution? Supreme Court justices? Lawmakers? Protesters? Anarchists? Marcus? We've got broken homes, cheating spouses, cheating pastors, cheating parents, but at least we still have the old-fashioned disobedient children and rebellious youth, right? <laughs> and all of this and even more exists inside of a pandemic. So where do we find peace? Last week, Pastor Curtis preached on declaring peace, and then he gave me the job of preaching on dispelling peace or the peace that dispels fear. Well, Advent is the season that we celebrate the coming of Christ into a broken world like it is now. And him breaking into this broken world in order to bring wholeness and peace that before he entered in did not exist. Well, it seems a mountain of a challenge and a sermon, so we better pray now. Let's bow our heads. Father God, by the strength of your might and your word, would you help us this morning to receive your word, receive it by your spirit, and let your word have rule and uh, preeminence over our hearts and our minds, that we might truly receive peace today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, those of you here, those of you watching at, at home, today's goal is to experience peace, the peace that dispels fear. And so we're going to go to this story, the narrative of Christ's birth in Luke, the second chapter, and see how we can experience peace that dispels fear. So let's go ahead, let's get started. Pastor John read the narrative, and it begins with these, these lowly workers. Maybe today they would be, I don't know, like pig farmers or uh, sanitation workers. You know, sanitation workers are, is just really elevated because when I was growing up, because you know I'm pretty old, got my AARP card, but when I was growing up, they were garbage men. And, and, and you didn't want your child to grow up to be garbage men, okay? Maybe sanitation workers now, but not garbage men. And, and, and it was not a job that was seen as one of high esteem. It wasn't something lofty that you desired your children to uh, ascertain to. It, was, it, it means humility, and it means low estate. And that's what shepherds were back in the day. 
They were not highly esteemed workers or people. These these, uh, shepherds, they were probably the lowest of the low because they had to work the night shift. They had to be there at night. And they had to, you know, wrestle uh, uh, in the dark and, and, and work with the shepherd, with the sheep all night long. And, and if they went home in the morning, you know they smelled like sheep. Because whatever job you, you work, it has a way of rubbing off on you and you, you, you smell like, like, like your job. And, and so, so these uh, uh, shepherds out in the field working at night of low esteem and low estate, all of a sudden... Out of nowhere, what happens? An angel, a messenger, an angel shows up. Now, not only does the angel show up, but because it's night or whether despite it was night, the angel shows up and also glory shows up with the angel. The angel is a messenger from God. He's he's the hype man. He's a hype man for God. He's got the microphone in his hand and he shows up and he begins to herald what's about to happen or what is on God's mind and what God wants people to hear. And so this angel is the messenger. He's the hype man. And he, 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 he scares the shepherds so much until he says to them, fear not. Fear not. Behold. Now, If you read your Bible, you'll realize that this is one of the favorite sayings of the angels. Because I guess they're so beautiful and come with glory every time they show up. Let let me tell you, when God shows up unexpectedly, you know what happens? We start checking ourselves. We start checking our sin. We start checking our failures. We start checking our frailties because we need to see, am I worthy of this visitation? Am I worthy for the entrance of the glory of God? And and it's intimidating. And we may truly get afraid because we know we're not worthy. And these, these guys are like, we are just shepherds in the field tending to sheep. We are not worthy for holiness to appear on the scene with us. Hmm. And so the angels get accustomed to saying, fear not, behold. Now the fear not means to calm down and and, and be at ease and at peace. The behold means, but I do want you to pay attention. Behold means focus on what I'm about to say because I'm an angel, I'm, I'm a hype man, I'm the messenger from God, and if I have a word from the Lord, you need to behold and focus and pay attention. Well, I, I don't know if you know this, but the Bible mentions fear not 365 times. That means you've got somewhere in the Bible you can go and see a fear not for you every day of the year. Fear not. It doesn't run out. It'll just cycle on through. So each and every day while you're facing these situations that seemingly won't bring you uh, peace because you are afraid, you can speak to yourself and say the word says fear not. As a matter of fact, because the the angels are often uh, quoted saying fear not. I I, I was thinking maybe, maybe, you know, this hype man, maybe he showed up, maybe, maybe he showed up and he had a a, a cloak on or a robe on and and I'd like to say on the front of it, it probably said fear not, fear not, because I know when I show up, the first thing you're going to do is be afraid. And so here, I'm just going to tell you, write it across my chest, fear not. Why, why is that, that's so important? Well, I think because If we all could put on a robe or a sweatshirt at this time, I I think what we would want, want, I would want one that says, fear nots. Not just fear not, but fear nots, because I would want mine to represent community. I would want mine to represent a community and a family that recognize that God is always speaking to us. And he's not only saying fear not, he's saying, I want you to be part of a clan. I want you to be part of a family. I want you to be part of a a spiritual community that can say, I'm one of the fear nots. This is how we roll. This is how we rock. This is how we walk in peace because I'm I'm one of the fear nots. I, I just don't, I don't know if that works for you, but for me. I just want to be one of the fear knots. I want to be in that band. I want to be in that group. 
I want, I want to rock like that. Well, you say, well, well, why? Well, as we read on, as we read, we read on, the angel says, for unto you this day is born in the city of David, Bethlehem, the, the birthplace of David, a savior, one who brings salvation, who is Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the Lord, the ruler is born on this day. And just around this time as the hype man is speaking these words and, and this bright glory light is upon the shepherds in the field and it says, but that's not all. Because suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere, I don't, I don't know if the hype man had a stage, but then all of a sudden the curtains went back and behind the, behind the hype man, behind, behind the angels was a host of angels. That's a whole lot. We're not counting how many are hosts, but it's a party of angels. And all of a sudden, to these men, shepherds of low estate, the heavens opened up after the angel has delivered this message. And all of a sudden, a whole heavenly host is there and a heavenly party just breaks out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A holy party just breaks out. And, and these angels, are well, they, 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 they got something to say, and, and they, want the, they want you to know, I think they want you to know today that, that there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost angels, they don't stop. And, and, and the reason there, it's giving this message that says, now, you know, when, when I say peace, you say win. Peace wins. Peace wins. Be, why? Because all Christ does is win, 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 no matter what, because he's got salvation on his mind because he cares for you so much. And every time his presence is in the buildings, everybody's hands should go up and stay there. I just wanted the mood to be right because they were celebrating about this time because when the, when, when the, when the heavens came to earth, there had to be this celebration. It wasn't just all quiet. It, 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 according to man, it was quiet because the baby was in a manger uh, uh, in swaddling clothes without fanfare. But over here with the shepherds was the celebration, the host of angels. The fanfare was taking place and God was saying, oh, I know how to show up. It's just not the way you think I should show up. I know how to show out. I know how to give a proper, a proper introduction. And it may not be the way you think an introduction should be. Hmm. And these angels, heavenly hosts were saying, glory to God in the highest. They're praising God the Father. And then they're saying, and on earth, peace, who is the Son, the Savior, among those whom he is pleased. Out there in the middle of nowhere, they had a heavenly celebration they had a party with a whole host of angels. Now, after, after the party was over with, they, they still, there was this afterglow that was left with the shepherds. They were still so excited about what they had seen and, and heard and experienced that they said, we got to go find out. We have to go see and tell what we have heard and so there they went, seeking to find Mary and Joseph and this baby. And when they found them that day, they just wanted to tell Mary and Joseph. They wanted to speak about what they had experienced and what they had heard. So they made known the saying, according to verse 17, that had been told them concerning the child. Just picture, they, they go and they find Mary. And they find Mary, and Mary is, I don't know if Mary had a midwife or not, but she's certainly alone by all accounts because they had left home because of the census and the registration. So she didn't have this firstborn child at home. Matter of fact, she's having this child out of town, out of where the hospital is, out of where all the familiar surroundings are. She is out of her uh, uh, place of 
peace and she is in a whole nother town called Bethlehem and she is delivering this child and she might feel that, Lord, you're with me, but I don't feel uh, uh, that you're with me and I, I feel alone and, and my husband, he don't know how to deliver a child and what we gonna do and, and here I am, I've got plenty to worry about, but I've got to hold on to the word that the angel has told me. And she could have been feeling like, what's, what's going to happen to my baby? What's it going to be like born in a manger? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these shepherds show up. The shepherds that were with the angels, the shepherds that had celebrated, they showed up. And they began to tell Mary, guess what? We were in the field. And an angel showed up. Guess what, Mary? The angel said, your child is the Savior. Your child is going to bring peace to this world. Mary, did you know? Mary. And all of these words, were they meant something. And they told everybody, but everybody didn't believe. Everybody didn't just swallow and, 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 and follow. But it says that, but Mary... But Mary, she treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Oh, right when she needed it, when she was afraid for her child, when, when she was alone and, 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 and still wondering, hopefully her husband wouldn't get rid of her. Just having the normal fears, disruptions, and lack of peace that all of us had, all of a sudden th this, this host of shepherds came in with this amazing story. Let me tell you something. I know that Luke wrote this book, but Luke wasn't there when Jesus was born. And Luke wasn't there, you know, uh, uh, to know that Mary treasured up what these shepherds said in her heart. Let me tell you this, if, if you will listen with me. This narrative, I believe, is, is, is written or given, it's, it's given by Mary herself. Because who would know? that the words of encouragement from these shepherds she treasured up in her heart. That sounds like she knows how it affected her and what it did to her faith and what it did to bring her peace in the midst of a situation that no way there could be peace. And so we know how she experienced this peace, even though it was just on the inside because her peace was on the inside. And yet her trials and tribulations, they were on the outside. Well, what is this peace that Mary had that she experienced, this peace that dispels fear? Let me try to describe this peace for you. This is a peace that is active or passive, but it's a peace I want to describe in, in, in more active terms. It's a peace that declares the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It's a peace that recognizes the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear or be afraid? It's a peace that believes greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's a peace that does all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's a peace that hopes against hope. It's a peace that hopes in all things that are possible. It's a peace that, that, that is able to run and yet a peace that's able to hide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a peace that confesses that I am more than a conqueror through him. It's a peace that stubbornly won't move, won't move, can't be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. It's a peace that sings that I am his, but more importantly, he is mine. <laughs> it's a peace that marches on in the name of love and power and soundness of mind. You might say, Pastor, I'm buying what you're saying. 
And I just want to tell you, but you can't buy it because it's not for sale. You see, you can't afford to own what it costs to have this peace. There's only one who is rich enough to afford the cost of this peace. I want to say that again. There's only one who was rich enough to afford the cost of this peace, and that is the God of peace. And the God of peace, he is the king of peace. And every king has a what? Has a son. And the son of a king is the prince. And so the God of peace has a son who is called the prince of peace. And the God of peace had to give his son who is called the prince of peace. And you cannot buy this peace. You simply have to receive this peace. You have to believe in this peace. You have to accept this peace. Hallelujah. So how do you experience how do you experience this peace that I just finished describing and talking about? Well, you have to understand a few things. You have to understand the atonement. You have to understand reconciliation. You have to understand justification. Yeah, I'm a high school teacher, so I can do this. You have to understand trustification. No, oh, there you go, Pastor. You, you just had to. Well, let's begin with understanding the atonement, Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. We were a broken people, person, nation, world. And by his stripes, we are made whole. If we understand that we can experience peace, let's move on to understanding reconciliation. Colossians 1, verses 20 and 21. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. You can't buy it. You can't uh, manipulate it. You cannot make it happen. You simply need to understand that he has made peace by the blood on the cross. We are reconciled. If you receive this, if you believe it, you have the peace of God. You are reconciled with God. Our next understanding is justification. Romans, the fifth chapter, verse one says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If we understand that, that by faith we have peace, we cannot purchase it. We cannot manipulate to make it happen. We, not, we cannot keep making uh, uh, people do certain things or asking for certain things in this world to happen. We can't keep asking for the government to change. We can't be asking for the officials to change. We can't e keep asking for our parents to change. We can't keep asking for our children to change. We can't keep asking for our spouses to change. We can't keep asking for our church to change. We can't keep asking for our nation to change. We have to understand this peace doesn't come by external changing. It comes by justification that is in Christ Jesus. And our last understanding, trustification, taken from Isaiah 26, 2, 3, and 4. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You see, what I loved and wanted to tell you, especially this morning, was that Mary was an example of peace and how you can experience peace. 
She took the words of the angels. She took the witness of the shepherds. And, and she took all of the, the, the good things and, and, and the positive things and the truths. And she treasured them in her heart. And she pondered, she meditated on them. And I, 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 I'm wondering, the question is, is now, could our lack of peace be because we are not treasuring peace? We're not holding fast to peace. We're not sitting and meditating on justification and sanctification and trustification and reconciliation. But, but we're off looking at the things that are exploding and happening in the world. When peace is to be found on the inside, the peace that he gives, the peace that he has left with us. This is a special peace. And you may want to know why is it so special? Well, I just told you you need to understand these things, but what's so special about it is that it's the peace that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> Yes, Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 4 through 8 says, and as we look at this, I want you to think, am I experiencing peace in the way that God wants me to experience peace? Now, too many of us are looking for physical uh, fixes manipulations and, and do, me, do me like this, pastor, get me right. Make, and, and I'm going to point you to the word of God because the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit are the only thing I know that will transform your unrest, that will transform uh, uh, your disruption, that will transform all that has erupted or ruptured in your life. Here is some solid advice about this special thing called peace that surpasses understanding. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Remember the shepherds, what happened after the shepherds had this visitation from the angel, after they had this party with the host of angels, what did they do? They rejoiced and went and found the baby. After, they, after the baby uh, was gone, they went back home still rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand means that he, he hasn't gone anywhere. He is with us. He's right here as close as your hand is to you. The Lord is right here. So don't be anxious about anything but what? In everything. This is the practical part. In everything by prayer. And supplication. Pastor, are you telling me if I want peace, I got to pray for it? Are you telling me, Pastor, if I want peace, I need to make my supplications to the Lord? Are you telling me that I need to recognize that God is in heaven and he hears me when I pray and that just like the angels of low estate, I may not feel like anybody special, but he's willing to visit me? Are you telling me that if I make my request known to God, that something will happen according to this word it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will what? Not Pastor Davy, not Pastor John, not the elders, not, not, not anybody, not your children. Your children aren't here to guard your heart. Your spouse can't guard your heart this way. Nobody, your job can't guard your heart this way. The government can't guard your heart this way. Nobody can do what the Word of God is talking about here to guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Hmm. And then it says, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace 
will be with you. Do you remember that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God? And then the Word became flesh. The first, the, the first way the Word became flesh was that the Word was with Mary in her womb because it said Mary was with child. At this point, that which was with God in the beginning has, has somehow left uh, uh, his heavenly abode and now is with Mary as she is with child. And on that day, that night that the angels rejoiced and celebrated with the heavenly host, all of a sudden, Christ burst onto the scene through birth and now he is peace with us, with man. Oh, He's a with kind of God. He, he longs to be with you. And he said, not just with you, but in you so that you can be with God and he can be with you and you can be in God and he can be in you. And therefore, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. If this is not enough peace to help you, if this is not enough peace to, to keep you going through the pandemic and the, 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 the storm, maybe, maybe this last thing I can say will do the trick. Because there is a future peace that is to come. This is the first advent, the coming of Christ the first time. But there is a second advent. He is going to come again. And with him, he's going to bring a future peace. And Revelation 21, verses 4 and 5, tells us about this peace. And it says, in this peace, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, behold, that word behold, I am making all things new. So if you're never satisfied with what happens to you in this life, there's a future peace that I look forward to. When I'm at my wit's end and I can't take no more, I just tell myself I'm so glad. Trouble won't last always. I got a future advent, a future peace, and I just connect with it. And I say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let's bow our heads. Oh, Father God, your word is strong and mighty. Would you let your word wash over us, cleanse us, keep us, guide us, guard our hearts and our minds, we pray. That peace, Lord God, we receive just as you gave it to us. We receive it now, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said amen and give the Lord a clap. Amen. Church family, as Pastor William so shared with us from God's word that we are the recipients of a great peace in Christ Jesus. But as recipients, we are not just merely those who receive, but blessed are those who give. Right? For it is better to give than it is to receive. We get to be ministers of that peace. And as we enter into our time of offering, it is not merely giving to the journey. The call today is for you to give to Jesus. That as you would give to Jesus, that you would say, Lord, I'm not giving you my money, but I'm giving you my life. Won't you use this to bring your peace into this world and we don't do it individually. We do it together as his church. And through what you give so generously, we are able to bring peace to those in our world today who are struggling because of financial difficulties due to the COVID virus. We're able to bring benevolence needs and meet those needs because of the generosity the Lord is giving into your heart and giving through you to himself. And so we ask you to give generously and joyfully so that you may be a minister of peace and that we can do his work together. And you can do that in a few ways. You can jump on the Journey app or you can text to give at 77977 or you can go online to thejourney.org slash give. 
Earlier, you got to see a glimpse of this wonderful new Advent EP album that, that our Journey Collective has put out. If you have not seen it, you can learn more about the Paradox of Peace EP. And you can go to any music platform, whether Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever music uh, service you use to go and purchase or download or listen to on live stream those songs again and again and again. Uh, I want to encourage you in this Advent season to go and just meditate on the words that you hear because what you're going to be hearing are the words of God from Scripture for us. Put to music so we can sing along and remind ourselves in each of these moments that our God is a God of peace. But we want you to do that not just for yourself, but invite others into that. And this is an album that you can tell your friends, neighbors, or even non-believers about so that they can hear the message of God's peace for their worried, weary world. And so you can find that again at any live stream. But if you want more information, go to thejourney.org or go to the Journey app. And as we end our service today, before you leave, uh, if you are in need of prayer, when you exit out from these doors, we will have elders on the outside who want to pray that God's peace would reign in your life. And so if you are in need of God's peace, please come find an elder. They will be willing to pray not only for you, but with you so that you would know his peace. I invite you now to stand with me. And after this benediction, for those who are in the service, please exit through the doors uh, here uh, towards the stage. As you exit out, we're going to start at the front, row by row, all the way out. We do ask everyone to, to expedite their exodus from the sanctuary uh, to fellowship outside so that we can disinfect and sanitize this room. If you would, whether you're at home or here in this place, extend your hands as a sign of receiving this blessing that comes from the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone, for the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Church, go in his peace.